So let's move into UV now that we've gone really deep on thermoregulation. So UV, why is it important? Okay, so um, UV, ultraviolet. Um, so the, the main one that's got attention, um, especially in reptiles that we've known of, is uh, UVB, uh, which is... I'll, I'll bring up a graph... Um, and I'll be honest, I stole it from, um, I think, Francis Baines, Dr. Francis Baines, the uh, world's expert in reptile UV. Uh, so this is a um, an image that Dr. Francis Baines put together. And I feel that this is pretty much when we're talking in the context of bearded dragons, you can't get a better diagram than this. It's got the bearded dragon there. Um, so UV is a wavelength of light that it rea reacts in the skin with cholesterol um, to, to form uh, pre-vitamin D3. And then the warmth from the basking light or the sun converts it to vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is really important because um, it tells the body to... Um, it gives them the substrate for it to pull calcium from the intestines, but it also has a lot of regulation effects on the other parts of the body. So the main thing we see in clinical practice, the effect of, so remember a veterinarian sees when an animal is not healthy, so it's got to the point where it's gone from surviving to not surviving, um, is we see a lot of bone disease. So there's not enough vitamin D for it to tell the uh, body to start pulling in calcium and uh, laying down, telling it to lay down bone or mobilize bone, um, the calcium in the bone. So that's what UVB is important for. And um, I'm not quite sure whether I've explained it as well as I could have, but... Um, at the basics of it, it's essential. Vitamin D is essential for bone metabolism. And that's why we have problems. Uh, you have problems in reptiles like rubber jaw when um, there's a lack of vitamin D3 or vitamin D. And the primary way in which bearded dragons get vitamin D3 is through exposure to UV light and, importantly, being at the right preferred optimal body temperature. They need the warmth in the skin to get it from the pre-vitamin D3 to the vitamin D3. So those two are very important and it's often been, people think, oh yeah, I've given it UV, B, whether it was the right amount, but without the proper basking temperature, you are not optimizing this process. So, um, yeah, so that's that's why it's important. And several uh, a study by Unix et al. Um, he studied juvenile bearded dragons, and he put them under UVB light. And bearded dragons that were exposed to UV um, had a lot higher vitamin D, blood vitamin D three levels than um, animals without vitamin uh, without UVB. But also, he overdosed the animals, giving them uh, some animals that had no UV were given up to four times the amount of recommended daily vitamin D3 requirement. And those animals could not absorb that vitamin D3 in the diet. So we know that bearded dragons cannot absorb vitamin D3 through the diet um, like people, like humans. So... Um, therefore the only way and the proper way to keep a bearded dragon for it to ensure that it has enough vitamin D is exposing it to appropriate levels of UVB along with the appropriate um, basking temperature. So. so when people, I've seen some people say before where, but oh yeah, if you get enough oral D3, you just keep it hot enough, like UVB is a scam. So that's certainly not the case. No. So we know from a scientific study where they went from, gave it 
the days, the amount that are required to twice the amount required to four times the amount that a bearded dragon requires. And there was no significant increase of vitamin D3 in their blood. So we know they can't. And I also know that the main cause of that is that vitamin D is a fat soluble um, vitamin. The problem is it cannot be absorbed across, passively absorbed across the intestine. It's not in a form that can be passively. So just put it in there and it's not just going to cross the intestinal barrier. It requires the bile acids, which is from its liver, to go in there and break up those vitamin, those fat molecules into a small, what we call a micelle. And it, and then the intestines can go through and pull it into the bloodstream from there. So they lack that, those bile acids to actually, um, absorb the vitamin D3. And there's pretty much in terms of giving them straight vitamin D, there is no way to get it across there. Um, doesn't matter. You can pump as much as you want in there and well, four times the amount they need and they're still not going to absorb it. So, um, so UVB is pretty much the only way to, to get it in there. And, you know, some animals, some people go through, say, oh, I've never given it to their animals. And, you know, that's not a really, we, we know that these animals aren't going to be at optimal levels. So, so obviously you were measuring UVIs in the wild. Um, what did you find that they were basking at UVI-wise in the wild? And then based upon that, what would you recommend in captivity? So um, I'll actually show you another graph. So this is the UV index. So for those listening that don't know what we're talking about when we say the UV index, so the UV index was a standard made um to measure the amount, well, it was to put a value on the amount of uh, sunburn um, activity of the sun. And it actually closely correlates to the vitamin D production in the skin. So reptile keepers have adopted this to this UVI um, unit, ultraviolet index unit, to tell us the vitamin D producing power of a light that we're giving, a UV light we're giving to a reptile. Or we can go out and say, well, this is how much, you know, at UVI 2, it's half as strong as UVI 4. So um, it's very useful. We're very lucky that it can be used to tell us how well, uh, how the potential of a, of a UV producing lamp is, but what? So what I did is, um, for I got my hands on a UV index meter, the solar meter, um, six point five, and I actually measured the UV index of every bearded dragon that we caught while I had this index meter. Um, in the end, I think it was about one hundred and twelve data points on these dragons. So it's not a small number. And if you look at this graph, um, I haven't split it. This is over our whole three years. And if you look at the curve, it's time of day on the bottom and UV index on the vertical axis there, uh, the axis there. So it pretty much follows the normal daily um, peak and drop of um the sun. So obviously the sun's producing the UV. And what we found is, so even though there's dragons, they've got, you know, they were out and most of these dragons up here were out at greater than 10, some of these ones at the top. Um, and then if we look down to the right, right at the bottom, um, this is after dusk. Um, so, you know, UV index was close to zero. But if we look at all the data points and we averaged it out, um, we actually can correlate. So if you do 
um, the statistics on it, when you get all the animals and average it out, uh, we got an average of about 4.1. So this is what the average dragon would need um, to produce appropriate levels of vitamin D for them to be exposed at a UV index of 4.1. Um, if we look at, as I said before, we had gravid females. They were out basking after dusk. dusk. So the data is skewed there to go towards, you know, a lower UV index. Um, but on average, our animals are, uh, were using 4.1 as a UV index. And this is something that we can use inside the enclosure where the basking spot is. Um, because at, we know at 4.1, uh, UV index of 4.1, the average dragon is producing um, the same as it would as if it's out in the wild. It would be exposing itself on average to an UV index of 4.1 while basking. So that's how we can correlate and, and adapt it to our um, husbandry and captive care is providing them with that 4.1. We, and we have, I have no doubt it, that UV index that they could produce an adequate level of vitamin D for them to thrive into captivity. So based upon that then, what technology would you recommend keepers use and then how would you place that in the enclosure in terms of where it's placed? So if you had the funds, I would get a UV index meter, a solar meter 6.5. Um, that's the one that we used that's the one that's had the most research done with it that's the one that's been tested the most um, and we can say that you could get one of those if you're a keeper who has several animals and several lamps and you want to be able to monitor them for the the best amount of time um you you i would suggest in purchasing a solar meter 6.5 um if you are a keeper who um has one bearded dragon um i would say either get your lamp tested by a vet a reptile vet if they have a 6.5 because it, it just wouldn't be kind of like a cost benefit analysis just wouldn't be there i would highly recommend you buy a reputable uh uvb fluorescent lamp um which would be you know there's the Reptosun uh, lamps or the Arcadia lamps, um, which have been tested by lots of keepers with solar meters. And their amount of UV um, emitted from those lamps has been tested and at certain distances and go off those recommended distances and replace your lamp at the recommended interval um, if you didn't want to buy one of these solar meter 6.5s or where it just didn't it's not enough value for you so you know you're only keeping one bearded dragon just change the lamp as arcadia or Reptosun sun recommends and that's every 12 months and have the basking spot where your dragon's back would be um under where the basking lamp is where the uv overlaps with it have that hitting at between about 3.8 and 4.5 so back in the day, obviously, people used to have like UV the entire length of the varium. What would you recommend nowadays? So there's several ways you can do it. Um, my recommended way is to have your UVB lamp so it covers the whole animal. Um, and that way, and the basking, obviously the basking lamp, it overlaps with the basking lamp. So it gets the warmth and the UV over its whole body. Um, if you had a focused type UVB where the UV would be 6.5 in the middle and then petering out to, you know, zero at the edges of the animal, it just makes it really hard to go, okay, how much is this animal actually getting? When these bearded dragons were basking during the day, when they come out to bask, they just expose their whole body. So let's just replicate the sun have it so it's covering the whole body while it bars 
it gets the right temperature, it gets its appropriate amount of UVB. That's the best way to do it. Um, those that have giant enclosures, um, yeah, once again, have it everywhere where you have a basking spot, have the UV at the appropriate level. So you really recommend like a long linear like T5 that so covers the, the entire animal in a flood and not like the coils for an adult no. beta dragon? So the, the co coils are notorious for producing a very focused beam. Um, you've got mercury vapor bulbs um, and your metal halides and they focus, they have a focus beam in the middle. Um, and it's, it's just really hard to get, you know, an, an even spread on there. Like where do you measure the UV from? From the center or the outside or halfway it's just hard to get an idea and honestly it's it's not i've measured in the wild and these dragons that are basking for the beauty hour that they're, they're not you know they're not sitting in 6.5 in the middle of their head and then zero down the back of their tail or anything it's it's right across their body so um that's the easiest way to do it um, and the most reliable way. Yeah, a, definitely a, a T5 for a, a bearded dragon size animal. If you've got a gecko or some small lizard, then yeah, sure. Having a, having a, a coil lamp would suffice because it would cover the whole animal and be relatively, um, linear over a small area, like at the same. But for a bearded dragon that's, you know, two foot long, 60 centimeters long, it's, you need a nice broad spread, even spread. So. The clip you've just watched is just a snippet of a larger podcast episode where we had Beardivet on the podcast. If you want to find the full podcast episode, you can find that up here. Or if you want to carry on looking through the Beardivet Explained series, you can find the rest of it down here.